this is one of the most exclusive and talked about events in poker. This is the Party Poker Premier League. Tonight at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal, the final table action continues as the remaining players pit their poker wits against one another in a bid for Premier League stardom. Jesse May has been on the edge of his seat in the commentary booth as we witness one of the great finals. Here's his recap of the action so far. Last time, first and second in the league, Jeff Gross and Dan Coleman started the day as chip leaders. But it was Brian Rast and Sorrell Mizzy who took up the challenge, four and five betting each other. Okay, I don't, I don't understand why these guys are doing this. He's five bet. He five bet it with I Jack give up. Nine. That one hurt, Rusty. Oh, Seven oh, four oh, suited, oh, huh? Oh, I have standards, Scott. Okay. Coleman started to accelerate, taking a chunk from Coop. Oh, oh. We have a different thing every street. He didn't care. And then he busted out oh, King oh, Rast with a flush. Oh, Brian Rast finishing in sixth place. Oh, yeah, guys. It was a good experience. I'd definitely come the next time if, if you guys have me. And just before the break, Coon doubled up against Seaver. Oh. Whoa. Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was this supposed to be that? Oh, oh he's like, I'll do one that card. He just card switch. I want to see what that third burn is after whoa. the hand. What was that? That yeah, was some I crazy that, shenanigan. That that. Yeah, 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 I guess it was right. third burn. Oh, I just. <laughs> Whoever's in the booth, thanks. I, I got somebody on my team, baby. That was insane. Dan Coleman way out in front with over 800K after knocking out Brian Rast. Gross in second with 446. Mizzy sandwiched in the middle and Seaver and Coon slightly adrift. Joining me in the commentary booth is the newly eliminated Brian Rast. Put on a great display in this Premier League. And of course, Phil Locke both sharing their views on this final table. Right, 16, Five handed and wouldn't Scott Seaver like to become the first double Premier League champion in one season five. Oh. Short stacked here, but pretty unlucky in the heat stages and a tactical masterclass from Seaver to get to this final table. Min raise with the ace and the cutoff. Call. Three players. What a beauty for Dan Coleman. Check. This, that, and everything. Check. Check. Checked around. And what a great check by Scott Seaver, huh? Check. He bets that. He gets put off this check. pot. Now he's got the straight. Chance to really make some chips here against Coleman. This is very interesting because Scott actually oh. has the straight, which is essentially the nuts, but Coleman has two pair and a flush draw. So, I mean, you know, he's... All right, so Seaver raised from the cutoff, and it was it was call-call in the both blinds. Everyone checked the flop, and now... Right, there's tons of, right. like, even the seven of hearts, if you're horribly wrong... Oh. You still have one out against any hand. Right, so Coleman has super under rep hand. He actually checked the flop to check raise, and he's it got checked behind. And that's and a super it's a very boy. bad card check. for Coleman. Yeah. Very good card for Seaver. I mean, Coleman kind of got this far, and he kind of has a bluff catcher. Seaver has some bluffs. He's going to be in a very tough yeah. river spot. I actually think he might pay Seaver off. Let's see what size Seaver chooses. 58, I think. I, I, I don't think Seaver's going to go super fat, just because... 
I think it's asking too much. My guess is Seaver goes for like, yeah, around 50k. Seaver could have easily like he could have made a mistake. Bluff. Sorry, if Seaver has like around 75 left, he might just put it all no, in. No, he doesn't though. Nope. He has like 140. So he's oh, probably going to bet something that like he can still have some chips afterwards to shove with. So what? Yeah, look like 60 maybe. Bet 56,000. Yeah. Wow, that was our original guess. Right. And like this is a great bet because it's you know, if, if he's wrong in bluffing, he still has chips. I think you'd do this with a bluff too, so which is you know part of the reason you balance your bet sizing. Now Coleman's in a tough spot because he has one of the few hands he could legitimately call down to the river with that's not a straight, like two pair and a flush draw. So he's probably going to call, like I said. Do you think and it was completely standard for Seaver to check back this hand on the button, or it just seems like a lot of people would have made the mistake of. You know, Coleman was just sitting there waiting to check raise them all in with the, yeah. with the straight flush draw. Well, he just slipped a it. Short stack yeah. equity, realizing you have ace high and a same gutter. Same principle. Yeah, I mean, Seaver and I did quite a lot of that in our heads up match yesterday. You know, sometimes you do stuff like that, and you know, maybe he'd be more likely to have bet like the Jack Seven, but the Ace Seven he checks it back. Well, oh wow, Coleman making some very good decisions. I mean, yes. really very good river decisions. Yes. I mean, that's it's a that's a tough right. spot. It really is. And I mean, I, I don't I don't think like folding or calling neither one's like crushingly right. I mean, that's one of those spots where you can make a good argument either way. And sometimes you just reach into your gut and you like go with your feel, you know, I feel very comfortable. And I know the pressure is on the other players, not me. I don't really have to do anything too crazy. This is my time and I'm playing great and I think they know it too. Every player at this final table is a stud, you know, they all play such great poker. It's going to be really tough. It's one of the tougher Premier League final tables for sure. A lot of it's going to have to do with who, who runs well today and who's on their A game. Welcome back. With so much at stake, it promises to be an exciting finish to the Party Poker Premier League. Let's head back to the final table action here at the Playground in Montreal. This is the final table. Five players still in contention for the title, and it's Dan Coleman out there swinging from the rafters with over 800,000 chips. Rose some way off in second, and they're all going to have to catch Coleman. It's been a fantastic season in Montreal, and I think we have to say, Phil, that we've seen 12 great players starting out, but it's the guys who are still standing here tonight that are just super in the zone, aren't they? Right, they're not even, they don't even, they're not thinking, hey, what's right over a thousand years? What's right right now? And they're getting it right a lot. Those should be the guys who make the final table. Not necessarily the best oh. players. I'm not saying these aren't the best players, but the guys who are in the zone this week. Yeah. Hold. Me and the best. So Gross's real first entrance into a pot in about three orbits is a flat from the small blind 18, against the Mizzy Open. And now he's decided it's called the donk lead. Yeah. And yeah. it's a, uh, and they call it's it a very strange, it doesn't, it's not called a donk lead because only donks make this lead. It's kind of, I read about the evolution of how it got its name. And it's a, it's a, it's a non-standard original line. I, I think it's a reasonable play. He's definitely making it here with some weird backdoor equity. Uh, but a hand that, you know, is nine high and would have to check fold. Uh, unfortunately for him, he's just his timing is bad and Mizzy's got got it. Yep. And uh, Gross, I can't see Gross winning this pot. Here it comes. Uh, Mizzy's not planning on folding his hand at any point. And, you know, I mean, he's thinking there's probably a pretty good chance Jeff has a draw or maybe like a small pair. And, um, you know. Uh, Mizzy's hand's just too good. Top pair, top kicker on this board with a decent amount of draws. Right. He's not going to raise fold. He's going to raise. Um, but, you know, this hand's over right now. Oh, Jeff's done. This is a five hour drive, you know, so. Uh, yeah. I think. <laughs> wow, it looks like Jeff is looking to. Uh, he's thinking maybe Miz's three bet is raising this flop as a bluff. Wow. And he's coming back. Wow. And now, actually, this Ace is King is not a value hand. And by the way, it's not this a value hand a, anymore, is it? This looks like it is. I think Ace King still has value. Come by on. the way, no, the way the Premier Heat's been playing, when what Sorrel Mizzy has heard in the van and the late night gambling on the street, standing yeah. in the cold, is that this is a set from JG. That's what his brain is tuned into right now. Or, or a straight end of flush draw. I, I mean, Ace Jeff just two. has draws a lot uh, here. And not just that, but Jeff Gross is a guy who is going to find it harder to barrel 
well, uh, the far the deeper this gets into the hand. The problem so you is have that to Jeff invest. never has king six, king four. Probably doesn't even have six four defending out of the small blind. Like he basically is repping a set of fours or sixes only for value. So I mean, Mizzy's calling oh. and he's going to see if a heart comes. And uh, if a heart doesn't come, he's 100% going with his hand on a non-heart turn. Now he doesn't have a heart, so a heart would be bad. But Jeff's not going to like a heart either. I mean, Jeff has nothing. Give him a diamond. Give him a diamond. Yeah, like a sick card would be like the ten of diamonds or something. Je Jeff is just shoving that card, but it, you know, Mizzy's calling. So this is actually a good card for Gross because I Gross will give up, and Mizzy, you know, is would not fold this card. Check. I mean, no. Mizzy's saying he has a big hand. He raised right. and then called. <laughs> if Mizzy was doing this, see, Gross is doing that, thinking, oh, Mizzy maybe has like seven, eight. But the hand gets something. to fight once he calls. But now Mizzy's called. I mean, Mizzy doesn't have nothing now. Right. Mizzy has a good hand and most likely a value hand, and that was a blank for most value hands. So. Right. In semaphore, it went. It went flash, flash, flash. <laughs> and I mean, Mizzy's. I, I can't. Mizzy's probably going to bet his hand now, and it's going to be over. You know. A and lot, Mizzy has heart, to Jeff. bet because he doesn't want to give draws a free card. Most of the time here, when you check, your opponent either has a draw or is giving up. So I mean, Mizzy knows this 000. language, like the logical language of the hand, and he's just going to bet his hand. But the one thing Mizzy's not saying to himself is, you know, this guy three bet bluffed me with air. I mean, he's not saying that. He's not. That is not really. By the way, his mind, going through it? his head right now is that Jeff might have been doing that. I mean, this is posturing. <laughs> like. If Jeff, you know, I can't imagine him putting it in. If he does, it's a terrible play, in my opinion, and would be one of the worst plays of the Premier League. And, and this is common in poker. Sometimes you have to swallow, right? You just swallow. Yeah. You know, that's it. I've lost a little bit here. Back to square one, <laughs> mister. Don't do anything. Yes, sir. I like JG too much. I don't want to throw the I, was gonna, I don't know there. JG is, uh, that was the first time he's departed largely from his strategy when it was more than three hands. And I bet you he regrets it. He's not right, a departer. Why did I get, of course he regrets it now that he lost the pot. I know, I like saying really obvious <laughs> things and making it seem like I'm clever and I figured something out. You know? I mean, if he had won the pot, he would have thought it was sweet. <laughs> yeah. You know? Okay, what I'm trying to say is, he's will he go back into the shell or is he going to, Has is he steamed up and wants to get that money back and he's going to try and thieve it back without having a hand? I think that's, I mean, there were some, you know, he had a little something. I, I see what he's thinking about. He's... He's thinking, I'm going to get my opponent to fold ace 10 for sure. Yeah. Now, this so. is not what you want after you've just been rattled. You don't want to pick yeah. up, you know, a hand that's sometimes tricky to play. I think he's going to flat against the same guy. Call. Yeah. Pull. He's going to flat. Honestly, Pull. after a weird hand like that with 40 bigs, I kind of like just three bet getting it in. <laughs> Because the weirdness, you're in the weirdness yeah. ripple. Oh, you're in the weirdness you're ripple. You're, you're conceding right. the, the wave matrix to Sorel. You're like saying, okay. Now you're gonna... playing a position yeah. pot where, you know, whatever, you're losing. And and I hate the dynamic where it's like you're losing and you're trying to figure out if your opponent's just pounding on you now. Right. And like now he's, see, look, he's in a tough spot. Yep. I like just three betting and being like, you know, time to time to go. Let's for see it. if I am right and I'm ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and right. you just you go, go with the nines. I mean, it's not even. You, you just know, embrace the weirdness by saying here. You sort. He's under forty, 40 big blinds anyway. It's yeah. like I think it's fine to three bet get in nines there, five handed. So, it's not like even it's not even a bad play even if you weren't. But even more like with a kind of hand like that out in a spot where, I don't know, a guy's just been pounding on you. You made a move. You're dropping your chip stack. Fight back. Nines is a hand to fight back with. Full. Sorrel Mizzy having a Ooh. bit of a burst of energy. All the action from the final table at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal continues after the break. This is the Party Poker Premier League, and tonight one of the most eagerly anticipated final tables is playing out. So without further ado, let's head straight back to the action here at the Playground Poker Club. Five players remain. And Coleman eating watermelon on the butt. Sugar nonetheless, spice your insulin. Really a draft. But you, you're trying to get 
Raise 16,000. That's an easy hand to raise. Fold that in width. Call. What are you playing? 230. 230. Heads up, guys. Which is nearly 30 big blinds for Scott Siebert. Check. That is no help for him. Check. Check. Pretty standard check back by what? Dan Coleman there with second money? pair. I know you. He's going to say the same to you. And it looks like he's induced a bluff. <laughs> this is oh, not yeah. recommended for Seaver. There's no way Coleman's getting out right now. Making moves. Call. How's that for a barreling card? But is there any bet that Scott Seaver can make here that's going to take Coleman off the pot? Or is he finished? Time to give up? Oh, it looks like he's going for it, Phil. And I mean, Coleman's just going to. It's going to happen for lunch. Bet 62,000. Well, Coleman's going to get max value from his ace track. He's just going to flat. I mean, it's not even like a long thing. It's a super, the way he played it, he under, he never really said what he had, and therefore he has to kind of get the value now by following it and with the story, catch the bluffs. This is what we were always talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you. I, I'm trying to figure out why, why Seaver. Last time he folded a big value ham, this is a. You know, the seven of hearts came on the turn. When, when Coleman calls on the, on the turn, doesn't isn't he saying to Seaver, I have showdown value? Is that the leveling war that's going call. on here? That's a good call. Coleman in the zone. And, and Seaver in a different zone, the bust out zone, 119, not feeling good at all. Wow, that was a tough one. He, lo he lost quite a bit a lot of money there in a single raised pot. Heat one saw the Premier League poker champion eliminated first for nil points. It's always painful to lose regardless of anything else, but I'll try my best and I'll get back at it. Heat two was a much stronger showing with a second place finish. Heat four, the tables turned. Seaver saw his big hands crack. First, Locke hit the straight Lord. against his aces. Then Esfandiari River to straight against Seaver's Pocket Kings to eliminate him with the bagel for the second time this yep. tournament. But in Heat 6, Seaver went all out. He needed a big result to make the playoffs, and that's exactly what he got, eliminating player after player to book his place in the heads up. A sec. Yeah. Up against world champion Jonathan Duhamel, it went to the deciding match before Seaver sealed the deal. I've had two zeros. I've had all the ups and downs that a grueling week of poker brings to it, but I'm still standing, still fighting, and here I am. I'd like to hear what Seaver would say about that hand. I kind of, I guess in his mind, he's decided that Coleman always bets that flop with ace-jack. There's a lot of guys who don't always bet that flop with ace-jack. Oh. But has yeah. he picked up something on Coleman there? I don't know. I, I, 15 big blind Seaver, that's a tough spot for sure for anybody in East Stack. Raise 16,000. Coleman feeling swagger here. This is a perfect spot for Mizzy to flat, right? Rass, this is interesting. Is this, it's always a flat, huh? You, yeah. Call. But he's a. Call. Yeah. There would Second be other guys, by the way. There would have been earlier, earlier in this match, there would have been times where he could have. Uh, Done, you know, when those people are trying to steal and whatever. But he's second biggest against biggest. Yeah, no. yeah you're just in position here. You have a very good hand. You don't really want to start getting into a kind of weird war. raising war. Just where set pedal. Yeah, just play in position with it. Set pedal. But I mean, also, eights is strong Check. enough. It's going to be a good pair on a lot of boards. Check. I mean, you're in position. Yep. You can call. If, you know, it's. This isn't a, obviously a terrible Check. board for Mizzy, so. 
Now, if an eight peels, that would be really. There's only one of them left. But that, uh, that would have been super horrible for the ace who just checked his box. Is there this danger that it just feels like okay. in that, this Premier League, so many people just flat opening raises with mid pairs that it's almost check. like turns their hand face up nearly all the time. You're just like, well, that guy's got a mid pair. That guy's got a mid pair. Yeah, no, it's definitely a huge part of the ranges, which is something to always be aware of. But uh, JG should I mean, not bet a reason this. For if it. he bets, he's only getting called by hand that can beat him. But he's happy to see if it can win in a showdown. Now Coleman's going to bet now. If he checked it twice, he's going to bet. Bet 18,000. Uh, he's, he's gone really crafty on these guys. Part of it is, I mean, if Coleman's ever going to pick aces to double check, it's going to be one with a terrible kicker like this. You know, if his kicker was better, I'm sure he would have bet you either a flop or eights, Can you take your eights or your 6-8 for that matter and just turn into a bluff and be like, you know what? It's hard to rep anything. Right. It was an easy fold for Mizzy and Jeff Gross. You know, he is actually kind of, well, wow. closing the action. I don't Mizzy's know. He's not crazy bluff. about it. Not crazy. You know what? I um, it felt like today's your day, you know? Jeff Gross is really not feeling comfortable right now. I mean, nothing's working out for him. He's been playing solid, hasn't been getting many hands. Except He's tried a handy. couple moves. Uh, yeah, and the and few moves don't work. Yeah. His so, little, he, yeah, who would assist? He needs to be Jeff Gross now, doesn't he? He needs to go back into the show where he came from. It's just a bad call all around. Just can't hit him right today, I'm off. The thing that you guys don't realize about tight <laughs> style is, I'm sorry, Jeff Gross style doesn't mean that you get first or second every single time you play. It's not what it means. That's why I never do it, because you got to go and steal the potatoes from the potato farm. I, I, it's, so, you know, I don't want to say he needs to go back to being Jeff Gross. Because he is Jeff Gross. And you know what? That, part, that hand was part of who he was, too. I just Squeezer think, with moves. I just feel like that hand is showing me right now that Jeff Gross is feeling out of sorts. I don't really like that call. I'm not sure he always makes that call. But I think right now, on an emotional level, I mean, you know, Jeff doesn't have a lot of experience, like, in big-time buy-in events at final tables. I mean, how many has he made in his career? You know, he made right. one, Alpha one World Series WPT World final. final table. Like one. No, I, I, yeah, I, I think what I meant by saying that is, like, you know how oh, sometimes, you know, a guy will be at a final table and he'll come up oh, to you and say, you know, up. ask you for advice, what should you do? And, you know, the answer should always be, do what you've been doing. Yeah. I agree. You know what I mean? Uh, so he needs to be Jeff Gross. Like, I mean, Jeff Gross came into here. this match. I, I'm pretty sure he was, from what we've seen, he was probably thinking last night, look, I've been playing really tight. I have all the chips. I'm going to try and just sail it with some aggression. And he, Have a look at this flop. Well, he, he ran into hands just oddly. Wow, oh, wow. this flop. This is basically Coon the nuts versus the chips. nuts. And um, Mizzy's going to bet. Coon's going to raise. And Mizzy's going to raise. Everyone's going gonna gonna to try and get their money in. This yeah. is where you go going to the bank. Can I get a, a mortgage on my home? Yeah. And now, Coon likes his hand more than Mizzy. Right. Coon's got top two pair. It's like he just Not has a, lot a good more. hand. A lot Depends more. Depends yeah. what he thinks Well, because here's has. Mizzy. The thing about Mizzy's hand, and Mizzy loves it for 20 big blinds, is that, you know, you're sometimes 46. dominated by higher flush Wait, draws. 46,000 yeah. So, you know, like he's Whatever. behind the ace. Whatever. Ace the guy is ace jack of spades. You can maybe hit an offsuit seven on the river to drill it. But you know? that said, for 20 something big blinds, Mizzy's yeah. more than happy to gamble. Correct. So, this Correct. is, at this stack depth, that's just raised. But I've been in hands well, where I have folded. You, you can fold like five, six with certain actions, certain stacks in a cash game here. You know, if you have five, six of clubs, all of a sudden you realize, wow. But not 10, six. Not 10, six. <laughs> Pretty tall order. And Jeff Gross and Scott Seaver might be not above doing a little fist pump here because they might just ladder up automatically if the spade or eight comes. This is up to the next two cards. A lot of the future rests in, wow, a spade or an eight. Or, you know, 9-9. Nine, nine. But yeah. basically a spade or an eight. And how about Jason kind of Kuhn? He could, like, he's got a shot in this, this tournament now. This is 374 now. sitting yeah. there. If Mizzy yeah. wins this, he'll be the chip leader. If no, Mizzy no, he'll be... Yeah, 370, uh, 08, yeah, 9. No. It'll be just second in chips by his... 61% for Jason Kuhn. Four, seven, he probably seven, thinks seven, he's seven, seven, favorite if he wins eight. this. Maybe not. Let's see what kind of final table this is. If it's the one where wow. the, the hand the that's straight. behind wins every now, time. with the straight, I mean, that's just sick. Now he needs a 10 or a 6. Yeah. This is the type of final table where the hand that's behind wins all the time, I guess. Those are tough ones. Who knows? Let's see. Yep. Wow. Good game. Good game bro. Coons out. 
I think Jason Kuhn played exceptionally well at this final table. He put himself he in he was a tactician, a, spot. a super yeah. tactician. And, right. and you, if you're out in the woods and you need a tactician, you want a guy like that who can also fend away the gorillas and whoever else might come into you. Yeah, Kuhn is athlete of the mind and the body. Jason Kuhn out in fifth for 60,000. Heck of a Premier League. Look at the chips on the table now, guys. Coleman still the leader, but is it is it the Coleman and Mizzy show? We've lost Jason from this final table. You had such a hard road to get to the final table. So, yeah. I mean, is there any consolation in kind of being able to get there at least? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel very happy with the way that I played. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's the only consolation I need. In terms of how, uh, I mean, the quality of the players is very high for this Premier League mm. this season in particular. So what was the experience like for you as a pro sitting down with these players? Um, well, I kind of specialize in a lot of things that make this more appealing to me than mm. some of the other pros here. I wouldn't say I was the favorite in the field, but definitely one of the best guys in the field for this particular format. So it suited me well, and I was very comfortable the entire time. Well, we enjoyed watching you play. Thanks so much. Thank you. I had an overcard to a jack. And I the blinds are about to go up to, I believe, 6K, 12K. So Seaver's got a couple more hands here at 14 bigs, and then it's going to be under 10, I believe, for him. So, you know, this this very quickly could be down to just Coleman and Mizzy unless things go well for these We need both to have a double up moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not nothing. This is going in. Hello. Ace, hand, buddy. wow, he's he's min raising it. The spade wasn't it's a very favorite, interesting but. decision. At, with and his JG stack, with I, the same hand, he'll pass. Now he might think, let these big stacks handle the 111. He might just go straight to the tank. Wow. I mean, I'm talking the tight tank where he folds. I mean, he's got to be thinking, what hand is Seaver doing this with? Is he doing it with a hand he would fold, or is it big? It's a very strange play. We have seen in the Premier League Scott make more strange moves with that, that like, you know, those yep. stacks that look really short than anybody else. He's a, he's kind of a grafter in these spots. I guess Scott probably feels that he has a very good read on how people are going to react to this. Because without that read, I, I, right. I mean, I just think you should right. shove. Right. Yeah, it's, so. it's having the read. And by the way, you do get a math thing that's not even a, an emotional read if JG does something aggressive. And oh. then one of the other two players follows with super aggression. So by now, the way, this yeah. shows that Seaver was probably planning on folding to a JG shove. Right. I would hope, because that's the only reason to make that raise there. And right. as you can see, JG folded the same hand, probably would have got in like ace nine plus. So, I mean, if that was Seaver's plan, then in my hat off to him, it you know might save him some chips against JG. But not yeah. against Coleman, because you don't fold. We raised 29,000 total. He's gone three bets small. Yeah, I, I, I would, I, I, would I mean, go I don't larger. think it means too much. It's just kind of enough to kind of get Mizzy out of the pot, because now Mizzy's really constrained on what he can play. But I mean, once you three bet Seaver, who only has 100k, it's basically you're never. Right. It's folding. basically that raise just protects him in case Miz wakes up with queens yeah. or a, some okay. crazy big, and he can think about it. So, I, Seaver is in a tough spot here because he knows he folds is going to be down to 90 and, he and really take the big blind. <laughs> it's like pretty he's tough. So <laughs> he's really tough. It's like one of those things where you're on the side of a mountain in Guatemala and you're on a bus, <laughs> which you and the, 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 the transmission goes out and there's no gas station or AAA or anyone to call. You're just in a bed. It doesn't matter what you do. You're sleeping out next to your bus that night. There's no. It doesn't matter if you're <laughs> Bill Gates and you have AAA. It doesn't matter. You're, you're next you just to hope bus. you're right next to a strawberry patch. Wow. And there's the oh. Strawberry. It's, no, it's over. Oh, no, it's, it's strawberry was, patch with berries. And no, what do you call it? Thorns. It's berries. a thorn. No, it's, it's thorn. A, with berries. But there's actually a guy on like a outpost tower with a sniper rifle. <laughs> right. Pick you off. <laughs> <once> <laughs> so you go in to get those berries. Boom. He just got picked off. No berries for Seaver. <laughs> <laughs> Although he is 50 to one, or whatever it is, he can hit ace 10 or. Yeah, he, what he really needs Boy, is an eight. That would be his gin card. He gave himself every chance yeah. not to go broke in this hand. But it wasn't to be. I'll take a nine. Eight would be the gin. Oh, oh wow, that's the hyper life card. No, he's, trying, up. he's, he's, up. Up. he's in hyper life. 17% with one card to come. Maybe the, the wind was just enough so the sniper couldn't get a good fix on him. He saw the bullet. Yeah, right now he sees the sniper. He missed the first shot. And now he's going to run up to the tower before the sniper shoots him. 
Go back to the barracks. That's <laughs> pretty much. He has to hit a six or a jack. He oh, doesn't he get doesn't. it. The, the sniper, sniper wins. He'll <laughs> <shot. Take it laughs> <down. laughs> take the berries with him, though. Scott it's hard. Saber. By the way, this is a. Well, it works out. This, I mean, it's terrible for Saber now. JG's going through the hoops. He's thinking, wow, okay, that whole laddering thing. What? I'm either 123 or 400, but I have 234. Okay, I can step it up a little bit now. This is where he has stepped it up in the past. Two and three handed. All these guys had a good Premier League. Scott Seaver again, right. you know, a lot of things went against him. Still managed to creep into fourth. I'm not really a third place finisher either, so I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope to double up. It's a million strong right now for Coleman. Half the chips in play, and Mizzy with 700K has about three times as many as JG. We're losing our former champion, Scott Seaver, from this final table, season seven. We'll be sad to see you go. Give me your final thoughts on uh, how this season went. It was a great league, had its ups and downs. Really thought I was going to ride the momentum, but I'm happy with how it went, and I'll just be more prepared for next year. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Now the three players as we battled out for the Premier League crown at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. Three players left, and the trophy is within touching distance. It would mean everything to me. I, I really want a title, and I feel like I'm playing at the top of my game. The jump from first to second is 400K to 200K. Play a $200,000 heads up single go, which is my specialty. I'm really looking forward to getting there. Winning this tournament on my home turf would just mean the world to me. This is not normal poker. This is like fun. It's pretty unlucky, mate. Yeah. You brought the monkey out in me because you're such a monkey. God, this place loves me. Nice to see Jeff. Nice to see done. Show me your hand. This is Premier League. There's no rules. Come on. Oh. Scott just wants to fire off on me. Playing high. We got ourselves some outs. Going into three-handed play, and Sorrell, you're right in the middle of the pack. The, the chip stacks are really spread out here. So what should we be expecting to see? Well, it's 612 now, yeah. and JG's got about 200K, so it looks like there's going to be an all in situation pretty soon for him. And I guess the majority of time, mathematically, it's going to be me and Dan heads up, which is going to be fun because we played so many. He's the guy I've played more uh, heads up than anyone in the world. So oh. it's going to be one of those things where we know each other very well and we know exactly what we're capable of, and it'll be a cool dynamic for sure. Dan came to the final table second in chips, but now three-handed, he has over half the chips in place. So tell me what's been going right for you so far this final. Yeah, so that first big flip, well, yeah. I had ace came, Brian Rast had kings, really fortunate run out, I hit a flush. Then from there, just made some hands, that's pretty much. And uh, I'm sure this is a silly question, but you're pretty happy with the way you've been playing. You've got a good handle on the rest of the table. Yeah, for sure, I'm real happy. Yeah. Got a lot of chips in play, big favorite to get to the heads up portion. And once I get to that, I'm very confident in my play. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Three-handed no in the Premier title. League, and so Dan Coleman, top, chip man. leader, a hundred big titles. blinds right, so I guess it's gonna, deep. It's got to be me or you. Yeah. This kid's too and young. Uh, Mizzy has, has time. almost 700,000 oh, chips, time, which is Mizzy, a little bit over 50 big blinds. And yeah, he's, um, he can wait. Jeff Gross I was the youngest person in this, clocking yeah. in at 210, yeah, sure. 210,000, yeah, which is like yeah. yeah. under 20 big blinds. So Jeff is under a bit of pressure now. Three-handed, he's going to have to... You know, the blinds are going to hit him basically yeah, so every what? hand, like so years, he's going to have to make something happen soon. And yet, his hand, his stack is too big to just be thinking shove or fold. I mean, he actually has a little bit of wiggle room, right? Three bet, three bet shove. Or oh, fold, yeah, maybe. three bet's always a shove. Um, right now, maybe at 210, it, it's a little too big. He'd probably open. But now, here's a close. spot where Mizzy will has make it. the pot a little bit bigger. Yeah, Mizzy just has it now, so... You know, he's ready to just play a big pot, play for stacks, doesn't care. Uh, Coleman could have 8 million chips, but Mizzy has two kings. So, and Jeff is loving this. I don't even know why he's, well, sometimes it's time. Yeah, you know, Jeff loves his little look at it and then put his chip on the card thing. But, you know, it's a, this is time to just let it go. Wow, wow, the Coleman just blew up! Wow. He, did. he just blew up! Oh. Oh. You like that, right, Jeff? I don't know. I mean, I, don't I mean, know. do you think Mizzy is going to be scared of that? Ooh. This is not a good time he to get you out. He just blew up. Why do you do it, bro? I just let me win it. one. I've threw bet you once the, the whole time. Nice. Wow. Yeah, he, that, that was that, is a, that, that was a, was a blow up. Trip. Did you think he Mizzy wasn't aware of the situation? He did this with pocket fives against uh, the, I forget what it was, queens or tens, and he made quads against Kuhn. Wow. What did Kuhn yeah. have, a big hand? Remember that? I didn't have to do that. 
I understand why Coleman's making the play. Yeah, he figures he gets all the light three bets to fold and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and everything, but and he's, he's putting video, pressure, but... You know, I mean, the question is how often is Mizzy Light three betting in there with Jeff about to go That's out? So if, okay right. if the answer to that is, is very small, small then this is definitely a, a blow up and a bad play. Let me see one so, more you know, I'm super leveled, super genius. I think he just celebrated too early. I think the adrenaline's got Coleman there. This is, I mean, he's down to two outs. Pretty good. Uh, how many times can the worst hand win all ins in, in the I mean, Premier this League? was a lot different than the ace. <laughs> Fours is a nice lot easy. different than ace king. I, I'm not exactly like sure if he, like if he if he sized he up busy. He sized up everybody quite well this Premier like League. Yes, but, but I really but I like think he definitely like overestimated how often Mizzy is three betting him light in that spot. Yeah. I mean, now, you know, Mizzy had king, so it, again, just to be clear, it looks just terrible. You know, if, if he's correct that Mizzy's three-betting him light a lot there, then it, it was a uh, fine play. But the truth is that I don't think Mizzy was going to three-bet there Jeff, super wide. how do you wide. like the words raise, re-raise, all-in call? Like, well, in I'm your pretty position. sure you're going to be ahead. So, I mean, I, I do like the that the yeah. cards are in the air, but I'm yeah, pretty that, sure. That was Strel wins, like. No problem. Well, if Mizzy is like three bet in light, he had four bet folds in his stack. And Both all of those guys had four yeah. bet folds in this their stack. This could be the Achilles yeah, heel. he could have four bet folded, yeah. which and is this, probably it, better. He could have made it like same, 180. Same same problem you did with the five. Same stack size issues. This is the one Achilles heel in Dan Coleman's game. You almost got it right. From hero to zero, Coleman had over a million, and that is one big nosedive. It was a good start for Dan Coleman in his first ever Premier League match, yeah. finishing up second. So that's that. I feel like that's that. Great game, man. Played really good. It was a consistent result for Heat number three at third place. Coleman put in a top-class performance in Heat four. His ace has knocked out Vanessa Selps and effectively ended her Premier League. Right no, I know. It's just you know said all in. All in calls. Like yeah, yeah. Serious. Wake up with aces. <laughs> Then he beat Phil Locke heads up to take maximum so, points. Am I out? <laughs> I think so. With his final table place now secure, Coleman notched up another three points in Heat 5 to finish up joint first in the league standing, but behind Jeff Gross on highest place finishes. I'm pretty confident going into this table today. Anytime playing poker, I always go in just trusting my gut. My first instinct, I always go with it. So this is going to be just the same thing. Wow, look at these stacks. 1.5 million for the Mizzenator. JG crawling up to the rear at 232, trying yeah. to overtake the 325, or Matt Coleman's 325. So here's, a, here's an interesting spot by Mizzy. Coleman limps the button. And um, I, I wouldn't have hated a shove there by Mizzy for what it's worth. I just feel like this dynamic right now, I don't you feel like Coleman would have raised like a really big hand? Right. Yeah. He's going to raise legitimate hands. How old? Yeah, like, I like min raise him most of the time. I, I just did, don't feel like after dumping off his whole stack, that's never like a strong limp. Right. You know? And I just feel like that would have been a free 30K for Miz to pick up. He's, he's trying to see what he can get away with right now, Coleman. He wants to find out what Mizzy will let him get away with. So, one of the things I feel like I found from this Premier League is Mizzy hasn't really been as much of a terror as he should be when he really has the chips. Like, yeah, I he didn't do that in the other match where he before. was supposed to uh, yeah. open 100% and in some spots. he was looking at his cards. And yeah, and, and uh, I asked him about it, and he, he heard what oh. people were saying, and he was still strongly opinionated that he was right. Um, JG loving this. Right now, JG has a chance. For this to come wow. to like explosion level between these two guys. I mean, this is just a terrible card for Coleman. Coleman's he's never getting away from this here on the turn. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a low card. It's not that worrisome. Yeah, and Mizzy, and Mizzy should bet. know he's he's going to play pot. The Coleman would play pot control if he checked it here. So you, you just have to bet, bet, right? I think if you're Mizzy, you bet. I'd be very scared. My opponent checks back. I want to get value from my hand. And Coleman's going with this. Yeah, I, it's too big a hand. He'll just let so. Mizzy hang himself twice. But I mean, Mizzy's it's close here, himself. honestly, if I'm Coleman, whether or not I ship it or call. Like, okay. given stack sizes, uh, the problem when you call is you give a lot of hands. Uh, Chance like 5-6 five, six and five, whatever. 5-6, 8-9. Six, Ace, 4 yep. of clubs, whatever, oh, a chance to catch up. Yep. I don't I actually would not hate a shove. 
But uh, Coleman's been playing Rivers really well. He's in position. I think either one is a viable he, he play. He could theoretically find a bad card for him and get away from the hand. Yes. I mean, it's possible. And that is, is not a not bad, a bad card. card. It looks like a big blank. <laughs> and the only hands it's really beating you is like king x of clubs or yep. king six. Yep. That's the only hands that that helps. There's a very small percentage of right. Missy's Coleman, barreling Coleman cards. basically looks at that as if it was, you know, yeah, a blank. two or whatever. So yeah. I wonder if, no, it's, this is not stackable. He, he, he can just bet, you know, half pot. Two thirds pot. Well, there's 204, which is about it looks like what Coleman has. I doubt Mizzy will go for stacks by by going all in. My guess is Mizzy will go for more like 80 to 100. Yeah. Um, Just but uh, let's see if Coleman. When you have these hands where you know you're winning, there's something to be said about getting paid. Yeah. You gotta really. Okay, I actually don't hate going fat here either. It looks like he's going fat. The he problem did. is for fat is that it's putting all of Coleman's. On tournament here. Yeah, Coleman but doesn't see it. That might actually get Coleman a, to call, don't right, you think? Right, because it looks weaker. It, yeah. uh, it's certainly a looks weaker play. Right, that's exactly <sighs> what Mizzy's trying to level him. You're so told you had 10-7. Mizzy's yeah. leveling him. He's saying, listen, I'm betting almost all your chips. If you call and you're wrong, you're out. I mean, you got like 40,000 or whatever. I think he's going to call. He's not going to like oh. it. Two pair, two, two pair. pair. He knew that was a possibility, and it was a gutsy call. It, it may wow. have even. I'm not sure what it was. I don't know. 62, right? Miz went big, and that got the got money in the wow, end. Yeah. Got it. I saw Rast bet in the exact same spot, and I criticized him for it. You don't but have, then you don't have I realized it's King Rast, so I did the same thing. Wow. Maybe it's different. I don't know, Rast. You tell me. Like, is that bad? I, like you didn't have wow, Mizzy said he made that bet because he saw me make the bet in a pot. I, I don't know what's going on. I just... <laughs> <laughs> the pros never know what's going on. The better they are, the less they know. Trust me. <laughs> wow, thank you, Mizzy. <laughs> it was a, it, that was amazing. I mean, tournament's over. <laughs> you have impressive stuff from Suro. No, either way, this is fun, though, because... Well, yeah, I uh, made some money, made some friends, hung out a little. I did have. Is he uh, trying to get someone? <laughs> I lost a bit of my passion. I game. mean, really? Yeah. You know. Well, you're tilted. Uh, well, this? Or yeah. What? Do you like playing left? It's a nice change of pace, though, no? No, no, you're monkeying around, man. Bro, I can't help it, man. I got that monkey gene. Some people have the monkey gene, some people don't. I have it. It's genetic. It's possible. But very Family one. Family one, man. Just have a look at that trophy, guys. It looks like Sorrel Mizzy's now. Sure and uh, Dan Coleman is just going to look at that and right now just stew. And yeah, I mean, he, he did take his chances. So, Brian, you think, though, that, you know, Dan should kind of, you know, pucker himself up a little bit and just oh. say, look, you know, he, maybe it was a mistake, but maybe it wasn't as big a mistake as it ended up looking like type of thing, and Ballin. that's what got me Ballin. here type of stuff. Oh. So, Dan Coleman all in and at, at serious risk. Obviously, the King-10 better than the King-Deuce in this spot, but not by you much. You that always. I should always check that. You have yeah. that always. I can't see a situation where I don't have it. But yeah, you have it always. But it's hard to have it. Yeah. It's hard to have it, but I have it always. Where it is always. it? But King 10 is pretty strong. No. Basically, Coleman saying just, he had you know, Mizzy had so to I have a big hand by limping the button, which is true, and I'm not really sure why Mizzy did it. But it, you know, this hand was inevitable. No matter what happened, it was going to play That's out fair. like this. I make this is actually a great flop for Coleman. Them? He goes from right. nine to 17 percent. Uh, has yeah. a gutter. Right. Yep. <laughs> Massive. There's a lot of jacks out there. This is about as good as Coleman could have hoped for without actually flopping two tens. Where did Elio go? Just the Jack. Mm. But, uh, you know, it's J for Jeff, not J for Coleman. That's true. That's there true. Is. And for Dan Coleman, he's impressed a lot of people here this week. Hang out. This, I'm hanging out. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. gonna, he really acclimated himself well, this Dan Coleman, I think. Uh, well, except for Premier that blow League. up with fours and yeah. the blow up with fives. He was a yeah, phenomenal player. 
Dan was the last name to go on our list here at the Premier League, and it was the first time that he played the Premier League. You're out in third. Give me your thoughts on the experience of coming in and playing this format. Yeah, it was a really cool experience, you know. Definitely a break from my normal grind online. It was a lot of fun playing it. Now, I, I've heard you say that you're the kind of player that goes with your first instinct. That's yeah. the way you play. So when you're playing the, the really big hand against Sorrell, mm -hmm. you know, is that kind of a first instinct kind of thing that you think he's three betting light there? Yeah, it was for sure just first instinct. Probably should have thought it over a little bit more, but it happened. It happens. And uh, I mean, this you do very well online. I'm sure we're going to see you here again in the Premier League. So congratulations on a third place finish. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Let's do one of these first okay. and then bring it oh, in yeah, and buddy. then hug. Oh, my JD, you made it, son. It's a good run. How do you feel about that? What a switcheroo. Coleman looked nailed on for heads up, but it's Mizzy who's taken all the chips off him and sits now with 1.8 million. For Jeff Gross, it's been softly, softly so far, but with only 200k, it's a mountain to climb. The Playground Poker Club is witnessing some of the very best final table action. Join us next time for the finale to Season 7 as one player triumphs here at the Party Poker Premier League in Montreal. You got the money, you got the looks. If I get a pass once. Wow, what would the wizard say? Show me your hand. This is Premier League. There's no rules. This is actually really silly. I'll let you show me your hand. How about that? Come on. Oh.